Hi, I'm Dr. Yolanda White. I'm a primary care pediatrician who no longer supports water fluoridation. Dr. White seems sincere, but unfortunately what she says about fluoride is either extremely misleading or flat out wrong. Pediatricians like myself are taught to pay very close attention to the proper weight-based dosage for each drug. The fact is that fluoride is not a drug. It's a mineral, much like calcium and potassium. There is 100% agreement among health and science organizations that water fluoridation is safe and healthy for all of us, including children. The dose of fluoride that's supposedly effective in preventing dental cavities is very close to the dose that, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, can cause harm for some children. This statement is false. The recommended level of fluoride used in public water systems in the U.S. is less than one-fifth of the EPA's maximum level allowed in drinking water. The graph pictured in this video also distorts the facts. Neither axis of the graph behind her identifies exactly what is being measured. And if you can't determine the amount of fluoride, then you can't determine the dose. And if you can't determine the dose of fluoride, then you can't determine safety. The level of fluoride that would be added to Portland's water system will be carefully measured and monitored at the recommended level of 0.7 parts per million. The Centers for Disease Control, the American Dental Association, the National Research Council, and the Environmental Protection Agency all agree that the 0.7 level is safe and effective for babies, kids, and people of all ages. The most clearly visible side effect is dental fluorosis, a permanent staining of the teeth caused by fluoride's interference with normal tooth development. As a Portland-based, board-certified pediatrician who has practiced for 32 years, I can tell you that Dr. White's statements are very misleading. Fluoride is an important mineral for young children. Children who drink fluoridated water while their permanent teeth are forming have less tooth decay later. Once the teeth are in the mouth, fluoride helps to reverse early signs of decay. This is how children benefit from drinking fluoridated water. The severe form of fluorosis shown by Dr. White occurs in several areas of India, China, and other countries, but this is extremely rare in the United States. The fluorosis typically seen in America is mild and cosmetic and does not cause pain and it does not interfere with the health and function of the teeth. A 2010 peer-reviewed study examined the impact of fluorosis on children and concluded that the effect of mild fluorosis was not adverse and could even be favorable. My concern is based in part on a large body of research finding that modestly elevated levels of fluoride can reduce a child's intelligence. This may be the most serious misrepresentation of all. This article, often cited by anti-fluoride activists, reviewed studies from China, Mongolia, and Iran, including water samples in which the natural fluoride levels were 400 to 1200 percent higher than the recommended level for fluoridating water in the U.S. The Harvard researchers who examined these fluoride IQ studies took the unusual step of publicly distancing themselves from the claims that anti-fluoride groups were making about these studies. Thousands of studies and over 65 years of experience show that water fluoridation at recommended levels safely strengthens and protects the teeth and bones of children and everyone else in the community. It's all about prevention. On this we can actually agree. And the safest, most affordable way to prevent serious lifetime dental disease is community water fluoridation at the recommended amount. As Surgeon General Richard Carmona said, fluoridation is the single most effective public health measure to prevent tooth decay and improve oral health over a lifetime for both children and adults. Learn the facts about fluoridation at HealthyKidsHealthyPortland.org.